What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 11 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019 and today we wrap up season 1. The last game of the year of real significance. The Intermediate Cup is still on the horizon but that is not why you're here. It's not why I'm here. It's the Irish Cup where we take on a side who, if you told me at the start of the year we were going to meet them in the final, I would have laughed at you. We're taking on Bangor, who, if I'm not mistaken, are in the fourth tier of Northern Irish football. A little bit mad that we've been drawn against them, a little bit mad that they've made it this far. They are a team who have won this competition before. In Lon's 130-year history, never won this competition. I want to add it to the collection, and I think we have a good chance to do it today. Since you were last here, obviously if you missed last episode, go check it out we kind of wrapped up the the main season i guess in terms of the league we have played three matches just to blitz through them i'm not going to show highlights but we beat porter down 2-1 uh, not the most convincing results but we got the win nevertheless we then beat uh Berlin and mallard and then we beat bally claire comrades both of those latter two games 2-0 results so good performances there and uh well since you were last here the chairman decided he was going to put his hand in his pocket and give us some more money um you can see if we look at the income here we have made a profit of 1.97 million pounds this month which obviously mostly is investment i'm secretly hoping he might put some of that into the wage budget and the transfer budget but we'll wait and see on that front uh, in terms of kind of talking about wage budgets and stuff definitely worth talking about i have a new contract yes a three-year contract at the club not the highest paying contract but a longer contract at that so pretty happy to get that sorted Another thing that I forgot to talk about last episode, but I absolutely have to talk about, is the fact we had our first ever youth intake at the club recently. We actually got a very good player in it as well. This guy, Thomas Watson, 15 years old. Could he be the future of Larn? Good current ability, at least in the eyes of our assistant. He's the player tipped with some good potential. Training him to play left wing back. He's got a long way to go, but he looks like a pretty good player. We'll keep an eye on him and see how he gets on over the coming years. Of course, we are yet to upgrade our facilities or our youth recruitment or anything like that. The youth and training facilities set to be improved next year during the season. I have, however, for the third time this year, uh, got our data analyst facilities currently being in the process of being upgraded. So good to see us kind of continuing expanding the club there, I guess you could say. Also worth noting, uh, I recently got rid of my head of youth. Actually, did I have a head of I feel like I had a head of youth development. Maybe we've just been granted the ability to get one. Either way, we're going to get a new head of youth development, which will probably help with the intake even further from next year. In terms of today's final, obviously, I expect us to win against Banger. I've also realised I've jumped the gun here. Normally, I go to the day before the game. We're a day early, but that doesn't matter. We can talk about some of the stuff going on here. You can see I'm scouting a few players here and there. This guy playing for Derry has caught my eye. Derry, of course, relegated, so I've kind of been scouring their under-19s just to see if there's any good talent available. This guy, our scouts like the look of... I'm not going to make a bid for him just yet, but he could have some pretty good potential. But, um, yeah, obviously preparing for the summer. If we win this game, though, we would be qualifying for European football next year as well as getting promoted. So that might change a little bit kind of how I approach the summer as a whole. I will say, I mentioned it last episode, Mandanda's training as of late is mental. Now, his determination's taken a bit of a tumble, but just everything else on the up and rise. Can't complain about it one little bit. For today's game, we have got some injuries, actually. McDermott at right back is going to be injured. He is the new record signing, of course, at the club for £240,000. Uh, out with a twisted knee. Not available for the final, which would be a bit of a shame, but it does mean that Kebby can come into the side, who, of course, is kind of... Uh, I feel like he's earned his spot at this point in the team. Uh, the long-term kind of servant for the club. So we're happy to keep him in. You can see I did play Donnelly in our most recent game as well. But in general, to be honest, the team, you know, even at the end of the season, I didn't end up rotating it that much. I really wanted to play full strength. And it kind of worked out for us for the most part. Obviously, we won the last three games of the year. I tried to rotate it a little bit to keep people happy, but it was... Um, well, it was not too necessary in all honesty. The players were unhappy. I feel like I'm not going to be able to make not unhappy anymore. If we do qualify for Europe, naturally, the overall quality of the squad, or at least what I expect in terms of the average quality of the squad, will jump up a notch. I will be looking to expand and strengthen the team further. Uh, worth noting that Doherty, our third-choice goalkeeper, is elected to retire at the end of the year. Our 39-year-old goalkeeper with 20 penalty-taking unfortunately has decided to call it a day he is still going to be a coach at the club which is good to see um, but yeah he's decided to retire from playing football at the very least 
Anyway, let's get into today's game. We are taking on Bangor. It's the Av uh, Irish Cup final, a massive game, going to be played at the Oval today. Uh, in terms of our team, you can see here, Chris Eagles is out injured, which is a real shame. Out for five days to two weeks, he got injured again, came back from that one kind of long-term injury that we talked about last episode where he had a groin strain and immediately got a sports hernia. So he's missed about the last two months of football and his physicals have literally fallen off a cliff. So his days in the first team might be done with Mandanda on the rise. We do actually have a bit more flexibility in the team for today's game because of the well, the fact that we get seven subs. This, of course, probably the biggest game in the club's history. This is a chance for European football Given the team that we're playing, I would feel like if we lost this, we have kind of bottled it, to be honest. We should be beating this team, I feel like, relatively comfortably. In terms of our team for today's game, I think it's worth talking about it. We're going to go with Connor Devlin in goal. He has been the first choice goalkeeper throughout the entire season. Has been a very, very good player for us. Um, a player who has just, you know, consistently performed well. 13 clean sheets in the league, not too bad for him at all. Along the back, we are going to go with Ushin at left centre-back. He's done very well since he joined the club. His training performances as of late, perhaps a tiny bit concerning, but a 7.03 average rating in all competitions. We then go with Graham Kelly and Michelini uh, at right centre-back. At wing-backs, we go with Tilney and Kebby. Centre-mids, we are going to go with Jeff Hughes. And alongside him, we are going to go with Romario Vieira. So a good little partnership, I feel like, emerging here. Uh, Hughes's legs have kind of just gone on him now, unfortunately. His kind of overall pace is just non-existent. It was already on the way out it's it's gone completely now so Vieira is kind of a nice complimentary player to him there Mandanda plays center attack in mid and then we are going to go with Mick Dade who has got as you can see here 31 goals in all competitions and alongside him it's going to be his fellow Northern Irish compatriot Thomas Stewart who has 26 goals for the season they've been a pretty good strike pairing it would be fair to say on the bench we've got options as well we've got McGrath who can play center back for us Elsewhere, you can see we've got Cosgrove at right back, Martin Donnelly at left back. Brad Lyons, still yet to make his live com debut, may well make it today, of course, was out with a little injury. Uh, in fact, it wasn't an injury last time, it was a suspension, but he's back in the team today. Daniel McKay, Danny Hill and Brandon Oddy also on the bench, so plenty of options there, but a massive game here. The Irish Cup final, I'm nervous, I'm scared. Let's, let's just see what we can do going into this. Let, let's see how we get on. You deserve a trophy, boys. I mean, if we don't win this, it's going to be the biggest bottle ever. This team are a non-league side. Now, granted, they've knocked out some big teams on the way to get here, so we can't afford to underestimate them. But ultimately, I feel like we need to be winning this game. I mean, you can see our, our end of the ground is filled. There's a little more empty, perhaps. But let's get this underway. This is the biggest game, I feel like, of the season. It doesn't matter if it's against a tiny team who we should be expecting to spanking. This is a game that could very much determine the short-term future of the club. People have asked me with this series, what's the aim? I've talked about the fact I'd love to have 50% of the team homegrown by 2025. You know, in seven years' time, half the team homegrown. I think that's still a, a reasonable aim to try and strive towards. Beyond that, I want to try and get a Champions League win if I can. I don't know if that's possible with our current transfer stipulations. I do feel like we are going to struggle in Europe given our rules. But I want to give it the best go we can. And well, Tilney, that's what we needed. Tilney comes up big in the big matches. He got a goal in the semi-final, of course. He's got another one here. Jeff Hughes with the assist. But yes, just going back to the point I was saying, my aim with this series is to win the Champions League if we can. Um, that's certainly the initial... Oh, well, not the initial aim. That shouldn't be the initial aim. The initial aim should be to get to the Champions League knockout stages as a shorter-term goal. You know, in the next seven years, I'd like to do that. How long it takes to win the, the league from here... Uh, or rather the Champions League from it is anyone's guess. With the transfer rules we're under, it might well prove to be impossible. You know, with, with us having to rely on Northern Irish players, that's not, you know, impossible to deal with. But in terms of trying to find the best British talent under the age of 18, the best British talent, especially if we're looking at English players specifically, you're going to be paying a lot of money for, especially at the age of 18 where we're looking to sign them. It's not like we can look for Premier League trainees or players who fall out of favour. We are looking for players who are very much going to be considered hot prospects by their current teams, which is going to add to the challenge as we try and mount a profile, I guess, in Europe. Anyway, we've got a chance here. Kebby out wide on the right. Can he get it in? He can. Stewart cleared away. Kebby, though, nice recycling of possession. Mandanda dispossessed and now banger. Trying to bring the ball forward. Kelly clears it up. Now Vieira with it. Goes to Mandanda again. Lovely back heel to Tilney. Great build-up play. Can Kebby finish it? Yes, he can. Both fullbacks on the score sheet. And what a lovely passing goal that was. 
Half an hour gone. It's two up. We're two up. I feel like we've done this fairly frequently this year. We we are very good at getting the goals early on. Mandanda, what a cheeky back heel that was. The finish by Kebby, somewhat questionable, but it's found its way into the back of the net, and that is ultimately what matters here. Goals for either of our fullbacks. Not a bad way to start the game, really, is it? Uh, Tilney with an assist and a goal to his name. He was man of the match, if I'm not mistaken, in the semi-final. Looking to mount another claim here. McLeany to, Oish, uh, to Ushin, and it, well, he scored now. I mean, it, it's it's his first ever goal for the club. It's come at a good time. I'm a little bit flabbergasted by the fact that three defenders have scored our goals for us here. But yes, Mandanda to that back post. McElhaney just nods it down, and it's Ushin with the strike on his left peg. Not known for his shooting prowess, but he is left-footed. What a finish that was. Banger. I mean, bang average is what you'd have to say here. Of course, following this game, I will um, be going forward to the end of season awards and stuff. So don't go anywhere, uh, assuming we are going to win this here, because we are going to well find out exactly how much money we maybe have to spend next year. Do a little bit of a rundown of the team. If you guys would like to see an extra episode, uh, obviously we did one of those earlier on in the year, please let me know. Maybe we'll just review the squad in way more detail in a separate video. I feel like some of you, you want to come and see the games, you want to see the kind of essential information, but you don't care about listening to me talk for an extra half an hour about everything to do with the club, um, which is exactly what the extras are for. Somehow we've managed to deal with that there off the line. Uh, I, I mean, we'll take it, won't we? Roy whips it into Arthur, nods it back. Devlin holds on to it, fortunately for us. You can see 30 minutes left, 3-0 up. They've had a few opportunities, to be fair to them. One clear-cut chance, two half chances, zero shots. I was about to say zero shots off on target. They've actually had zero off target. They've hit the target seven times. Banger have had opportunities in this match, but at 3-0 with 15 minutes left, we do look like we're in control of this game enough that this should be all she wrote. I'm kind of glad we've done it so convincingly, even if it feels a little anticlimactic. It feels like... In general, we've 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 won games fairly convincingly throughout this competition, but we've never been drawn against the, you know the massive teams. Maybe uh, Glen who we had in the semi final, you consider massive, but besides them, I feel like we got we had an easier path than we could have otherwise expected. I feel like next year is not going to be as easy as this year, you know, in cup competitions and in the league as well. Um, naturally, you know, with the money that we have been pumped into the club, I expect it to be very competitive in uh, the top flight next year, but. At the same time, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how we get on with, obviously, the transfer restrictions we're going to be under. That's going to be a challenge for sure. And the long-term aim of this series is going to be maybe to become the Northern Ireland national team manager, try and do stuff there, and really try and right raise the overall profile of the whole league. So as a result, whilst um, you know we might be in cruise control here, I'd love to get to a situation where there are multiple Northern Irish nations, or rather clubs, uh, qualifying for, say, the Champions League. That would be something really lofty to aim for longer term. Anyway, Bangor have pulled us back here with 10 minutes left. Maybe I should make some subs instead of rambling away. Let's bring in Brad Lyons for... I think we'll bring him in for Vieira, and then we'll swap Vieira and Hughes around. I'll be honest, our strike force hasn't had the craziest of games. I'm going to bring in Brandon Oddy. And I think with our last change, we'll bring in Martin Donnelly as well to come in at left-back for Tilney, who, as far as I'm concerned, is man of the match. What a performance he's had for us here. And to be fair, he's been one of the standout players this year, just performing above all ratings. Oh my gosh, we've just given away a penalty. If Banger score this, there is one goal in it with five games left, and I am going to regret taking everything in my life for granted. Arthur steps up for him. Devlin goes the right way, but can't stop, uh, can't stop it. I'm going to tell the players to concentrate here. We we Suddenly, I've gone from being in cruise control to being in super squeaky bum time. I've told the players to concentrate. If they score again now, what would I do? Oh, my gosh. I don't know what I'd do. Can we just score immediately? That would be ideal. Can we just score immediately? Oddie, fresh off the bench. Nice touch round his man. Lovely little finish as well, just on the pitch. His second or third touch of the game sees him hit the back of the net. McDade with the ball inside. It's his 15th of the season, and, well... Squeaky bum time, no more. For a second I thought everything was about to go horribly wrong and my world was about to crumple around me. But come if the man, come if the hour. Brandon Oddie, lovely little finish, doing what he's done best this year. Coming on off the bench as a bit of an impact player, offering us something slightly different to the likes of McDade and Stewart. You know, he's a little bit faster, a little bit quicker on the ball. I know, well, it works wonders for us and that is going to see us through here, folks. We win the Irish Cup 
An unusual final, given the team we were against, but we hoist silverware above our heads here. Not for the first time this season, not for the second time this season. I think this is the third or fourth. I've lost count. And we've still got the Intermediate Cup, which I'm going to be honest, I'm not concerned about in the slightest. It's a competition that is essentially a reserve cup. It's something that our board don't care about. So I don't care about it either. But regardless, what a win that is for us. We lift the Irish Cup. I mean, I assume we go into Europe with this. We do. We go into the Europa League. I, I knew that we did. We go into the first qualifying round. So I guess we'll be back early next year for that. We receive some decent money as well for that. The board love us. The fans love us. For the first time in the club's history, we lift this competition. We did beat Coleraine, the previous holders. Um, I'll have you remember. In terms of our route through this whole competition, it's not been easy. I mean, Glentoran and Coleraine definitely the pick of the bunch, but we knocked out Ards as well. A few closer games in here, to be fair. It's not been all plain sailing, but, well, in the final, you expected us to win, and we performed up to and beyond expectations, I think it would be fair to say. Anyway, guys, I'm going to skip forward to the end of the season. We'll go and look through the team awards and such. Uh, hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this episode thus far. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be interesting to see what we have going on. And also, we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess, our plans for Europe now it's been confirmed for next season. Okay, guys, so we are back here just for a little end of season rundown. Uh, I'm thinking, actually, the more I think about it, I might do an extra episode of the kind of the project extra um, after the summer transfer window next year. Obviously, we're going to have Europa League qualifiers starting early, um, but I do wonder how much transfer business we're going to do, and I think it might be a good time to, again, you know, catch up on our reserves and such. Anyway, I have to hold my hand up and apologise. You guys have missed probably the most entertaining game at LAN so far. Probably, actually, the most entertaining game of football manager i've had this year um you can see the scoreline here six five after extra time mandana picked up man of the match uh if we watch the highlights for the, all the goals we might be here a while but let's just let them play out and chat away um but yeah going into this game the intermediate cup final a competition that is full of reserve teams it's a competition i wasn't really going into with a great deal of care off the back of winning this, it felt like we'd won the Blooming World Cup because the way the game went down. We rotated our team, but still, against the team we were playing against, they are a third division side. Granted, they've just won the third division. Nevertheless, we expect to beat them, and they did not make it easy for us. Mandanda, I've got to say, what a goal that is by him. I feel like Mandanda, for me, he is the most exciting player in this team right now, obviously. An incredible playmaker, someone who's improved a lot this year. We've been training him to play as a roaming playmaker because although he's a naturally kind of a more attacking midfielder, I do wonder if we could slot him into a more, more kind of box-to-box -box midfielder role, you know, someone who really gets up and down the pitch just because he has got really good athleticism and physicals in general. So that's what we're trying to do with him. But in this game, he was man of the match. He created a lot. You might have noticed in this match, we actually went 3-1 down. Some really sloppy marking from set pieces by us and it took as you can see here the 84th minute for us to get a goal it was Mackay with it Oddie with the assist of course rotating the team as I mentioned for this game and uh, well from there going into extra time it was 3-3 and we grabbed two goals in quick succession the first from Tilney not the most convincing of finishes by him but he got it in at the second time of asking and while we doubled our lead here you can see through this goal um, which I think was a Mandanda assist for Oddie if I'm not mistaken indeed it was it was pulled back and I was breathing a sigh of relief. You know, 20 minutes left, 5-3 up. Surely it can't be over. They scored a set piece. And I'm thinking with 10 minutes left, oh my gosh, we're only 5-4 up here. What is happening? Four minutes later, I don't know what the defending is here, but Lynch is through again. And the Ginger Ninja himself just shoots it past our Ginger Ninja in goal, who didn't have Ninja-like reflexes there. But... You can see here Mick Eleni uh, with the last chance of the game with the goal. And, well, we ran out victors in the end in the Intermediate Cup final. So good to win another piece of silverware. Although with that competition, as I said, it wasn't exactly the highest of priorities. It wasn't something the board cared about. In terms of awards, you can see here Tilney picked up Young Player of the Year. I do really like this guy at left back. The fans like him too. I do question how much longer he's going to be our first choice left back for because we've got some very, very talented defenders. And obviously, if we just look at our left back options, I feel like the big breakthrough talent this year was Kieran Kane. Now, Kieran Kane is quite a one dimensional player. He's not the best complete wing back, but you can see defensively he is head and shoulders above Tilney. 
and he is only 17 years old. Now, he is going to be 18 fairly soon. Um, but yeah, it might be a little bit unfair on Tilney, but I do feel like over the next year, he might slowly start to feel a little phased out the team. In terms of signing of the season, Chris Eagles, I don't think you can really argue with that. Obviously, he came in as a free transfer. Unfortunately, the end of the season was pretty horrific for him. He's missed the last two months of football, pretty much. And it has had a really, really negative effect on his physicals to the stage where I'm not entirely sure where he fits into our first team plans next year, which might seem ridiculously harsh on him. But just given how good our team is doing and how good our kind of centre attacking mid talent is that we have up and coming, you know, you look at players like Tommy O'Donnell here, definitely one for the future. You look at other players, obviously, like Mackay, even Brad Lyons. Um, we have players who can play centre attacking mid in, well, plentiful amounts. And I do wonder if for Chris Eagles, you can see with the two star rating, if he might be a little bit past his best. You know, I feel like Mandanda is the obvious replacement for him in the first team for next year. He is starting to consider becoming a staff member, which is good, because I'd love to keep on, you know, older players who we do lose at the club over time. But yeah, if we just compare him to Mandanda, you can see they are in just kind of completely different leagues, in all honesty. And with Mandanda only being 17, I've got to give him the game time that he needs to continue his development. You can see here Shane McElhaney with the well, the fans player of the season. McDade actually came second place. Fair play to him, McDade. Um, he's punched a little bit above his weight this year, to be honest. But 14 goals of him, a really, really good return. You can see here goal of the year, Jeff Hughes against Windmill Stars. I can't actually remember this goal, so let's take a look at it. Let's go down memory lane. This would have been a cup game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can see here the chance. Can we zoom in? We can zoom in. Right, Tilney. I guess he's going to lay it off to Hughes here, who has a go first time. I mean, I feel like we had better goals than that. I feel like Mandanda's goal in the final that we just saw was actually better than that. But that is what was voted for by the fans, I guess. In terms of season review... We won the league, which was to be expected. Obviously, we had success on pretty much every front. And I know there's people in the comment section who have been saying, well, this is just going to be easy from next year onwards. I actually think from next year onwards, it's going to get potentially more difficult for us. Obviously, it's difficult to know. But given the fact our transfers are a lot more limited from this summer onwards, um, you know, our, our best young players, players like Mandanda, I feel like it can be quite hard to keep hold of them because I can't just replace them with the next big thing in terms of another player plays a similar position I've got to look younger that pressure is really going to be on me to maintain a positive flow I guess of these conveyor belts of players you know I'm going to want to hold on to players like Mandanda if I can but the reality is that over time they probably are going to want to move on now in terms of long-term aspirations here I talked about it earlier I'd like to try and win a Champions League at LAN now if that's possible with the current transfer restrictions I don't necessarily think it is I feel like with this series, obviously, the main aim is to get as many homegrown players as we can. I want to have half the squad in seven seasons' time homegrown. And I'd love, in that time, to get to the Champions League knockout stages and really try and challenge in the Champions League. Obviously, we'll see how we go on that route there. Um, to be honest, I've had a little bit of a spanner thrown in the works by our own success this year. Because... I didn't expect us to go into Europe for the next season. I was thinking it was going to take a couple of seasons for us to really qualify for the Europa League. But... With that in mind, yes, we've got some, you know, immediately talented players here. But actually, a lot of the players who I signed at the start of this season, you know, players who I brought in who I thought, yes, these are the hot prospects for the future. They might not cut the mustard at the level that we're going to be playing at when I need them to be performing. You know, you look at players like Jack Fox, I just don't see how he fits into a Europa League plan. And so with all the money that we've got right now, you know, £15,000 wages, half a million transfer budget... I might have to take a similar approach to last year in terms of trying to bring in young players. I have been looking at players whose contracts are expiring in a year. Uh, with this, I always untick is interested in transfer just because uh, towards the end of contracts, players get more desperate. You know, I'm trying to familiarise myself with some of these players. You know, we've been scouting a few of them. As you can see, I'll probably start mass scouting a lot of these. I would definitely like to try and pick up, you know, some of the trainees that aren't kept on at their Premier League clubs. I feel like that's definitely a starting point. Um, I think if we can rely on free transfers, we can do quite well. And I think we've already shown, actually, uh, with our transfer history this year, that actually we don't need to spend massive amounts of money to add real quality to the team. You know, you look at players like Paul O'Connor. This guy is top-notch. We're training him now to play as a striker. 
I really rate this guy. I know his finishing isn't the best, but we're going to train him in his shooting, which we should be doing already. Indeed, we are, um, which is going to help, obviously, with his finishing. His technique is going to improve through that and his long shots. And then because of how good his physicals are, I'm training him to play as a pressing forward. And I feel like if he can get his finishing on point, he's already very solid in the air. Someone like Paul O'Connor could be the striker of the future for us, of course. Time for not a small fee at all from uh, Glen Avon in the Premiership, where he was playing a lot of first-team football. But I feel like with players like him, we've shown that we don't need to spend massive amounts of money to really build like a very solid squad, hopefully for the future, of course, really hoping that he lives up to the potential that he seems to have. In terms of our squad dynamics, you can see here, things looking fairly normal here, I guess. Obviously, with a big turnaround of players and a big turnover of players in real life for Lam, we kind of came in with a bit of a blank canvas. In terms of how many of those players who are, well, players who started at the club will remain here kind of remains to be seen I'm a little bit unsure on what I consider my best 11 I feel like at least you know midway through the season this was my best 11 here so you have players like Devlin obviously Graham Kelly uh, McElhenney uh, we've got Tilney Hughes McDade and Stewart so a lot of the players here were players who started at the club of course when we joined we only had I think 13 first team players so there always was going to be a lot of players coming in Particularly now with us being in Europe, I feel like the squad size is probably going to... Well, I was going to say it's probably going to get bigger, to be honest. It's probably not. I would actually like to shave down the squad size to probably nearer 25 players if I could for next year. Obviously, mentoring was a big part of us having a big first team this year. A lot of these players I made available for the under-20s. I'd like to minimise that next year, kind of get a more settled first team, second team. I may, well, obviously promote players into the reserves. Our reserves is currently full of players who are going to be leaving the club in the not-so-distant future. Some of these never played for LAN this year in real life. Some of them did play for LAN in real life this year. They're just in FM terms. They're just not good enough for the way that they're set up in the database for them to be useful for me. You can see all of them, bar Blanchard, who's leaving to join Crusaders, have contracts expiring. And as I said, with the high turnover of players that I anticipate we might end up with in terms of there's players here who I've signed, obviously, as part of our scatterfire approach. It's been a bit of a shotgun approach where we've shot, you know, a big spread of players and just hope that we've hit some good ones. We've hit, certainly hit some good ones in here, but some of them just I don't know if they're going to be Europa League quality players. And if that's where we're going to be next year... I don't know where we're going to be, you know, in three or four years' time. I mean, I'd love to be challenging for the Champions League group stages at that point, but that remains to be seen. So, yeah, if I had to give a prediction for how things might go, I think we'll be looking for a few transfers over the summer. For the most part, I still want to look for, obviously, value in the market. You know, if, if players um, kind of get thrown up, you know, players like, if we just go to the first team, Mandanda, you know, if I find players in the lower leagues of England, which I definitely am going to have a look for, and see what we can find. If they turn up, then that's what we're going to do. And it might be a case of just manually scouting, going through teams. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I always have kind of go to teams that I go to. I mean, if we look at the season preview, obviously we can go through competitions like this and just see if there's any regions that get thrown up and then keep an eye out on them from there. Obviously, there's none right now, but over the course of the summer, things can change in that regard. I feel like you have to be really persistent when finding players, particularly in the situation we're in. With a tribute masking on, we don't have the most extensive scouting network. A lot of our scouting has to come from looking at national teams. It has to come from looking at lower leagues, uh, particularly given the age range that we're looking at in term uh, with players. It's kind of look at the lower leagues, look at the players who are in the you know the best 11s, who are the players who are the hot prospect and key player for you know younger teams. And really take things from there. You know, that's got to be the objective when it comes to trying to find players. And obviously, we can fully scout them from then onwards. You can see here in terms of the end of team meeting, I told the players that I expect us to win the league next year. I'd be very surprised if we aren't the favourites to win the competition, given how well we've done this year and also given the additions I do really hope to make. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait on that front. Obviously, Liam Hassan, unfortunately, the player with the longest injury this year, he was out for five months with a broken leg. That really has screwed him up because he is one of, in real life, Lan's hot prospects. And he just, well, it's, it's put a massive spanner in the works when it comes to his development, unfortunately. He's missed 40% of the season. Uh, I've told the players be back in three weeks, or four weeks rather. Obviously, the Europa League early qualifying stages start, I think, as early as June and July. So I'm not sure exactly when we'll be coming in for those. Uh, I guess that'll be where we start next season, probably, will be with that campaign. Obviously, something that's definitely worth talking about. Uh, our training and youth facilities are both going to be upgraded. £2.5 million has been taken out of the bank for that. 
And uh, yeah, I'm kind of optimistic to see what we can do here. You can see actually Crawford, a play who um, my scouts have thrown up. I like the look of this guy at 15 years old. He's already got good heading, marking and tackling. His mental seem fairly solid. A little bit concerned about the stamina, but he's 15. And I feel like for the age of years, if we can pick him up, he might be worth signing. Obviously, we've uh, discovered this year that, you know, Northern Irish teams, they're not so hesitant to sell their players uh, if they get some money for them. I'm not sure, entirely sure why that is. Obviously, Ballymena, thank you very much, may I add. They've given us players like Kevin McGrath this year. They've also given us, obviously, Kieran Kane. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to dig up more players like these guys, you know, in the coming years. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how things have gone this year at Larn. You know, in terms of the top goal scorers uh, and well, assist makers, you can see here McDade and Stuart leading the way. Oddie on 16-2. It's a bit of a shame for Chris Eagles because he has been so good for us. But I've got to think longer term, I think, now. And obviously, with Mandanda in the team, I feel like he's the player we can really build upon. And I mean, when you look at the hot prospects we've got coming in, there is a lot of youth in this team that I want to give first team football to, that I want to see develop and I really want to foster over the coming years. If we just look at average ratings, just to kind of wrap things up, you can see here the big performers really. Chris Eagles, uh, Mick Eleni uh, has been just top, top notch this year. Club captain, Plymouth, no longer interested in him. I hope we can keep hold of this guy for the foreseeable future. I think he's a very, very good centre-back who we can get a lot out of. Um, McDade, obviously a good player. Thomas Stewart as well has got one year left on his contract. Obviously, we've got players whose contracts are expiring here. There's certainly some that I'm going to want to try and extend. That'll be definitely the immediate aim. On the flip side, there are players who, well, they're, they're Lan's actual players, but I don't know where they fit into my long-term plans. You know, you look at players like Paddy McNally here, a good player, played a few games for us, but I just don't know how I fit him in my first team plans, and it feels a bit ruthless. But given the fact that we are now elevating ourselves to a club who are going to be playing in Europe year in, year out with one of the bigger budgets out of all the Northern Irish sides, or indeed the biggest budget out of all the Northern Irish sides, I expect to see some success in Europe. And I think that might come at the cost of some of the players who have got us here. Certainly, you know, starting the next season, I'd like to have players uh, like, well, uh, Jeff Hughes still in the first team. I think Stuart and McDade still probably have a place. It's difficult to tell, really. Obviously, with, with us getting promoted, with us having so much money, I'm hoping that we're going to get lots of opportunities to sign players, but uh, at least right now, still in May, the kind of quality of player that we can attract isn't, you know, scream and shout about. You can see there are Premier League players listed here as players that we could potentially sign. So I guess that's a good sign. Of course, we are going to be restricted by our, well, our transfer restrictions that are self-imposed. In terms of 18-year-olds, suddenly the options that we have are narrowed down quite a lot. In terms of positions that I think are going to be important to solidify this year, I'd like to get a new goalkeeper. I do like Devlin. I just don't think he's the long-term solution in goal, I guess. I was kind of hoping that Billy O'Brien would improve more throughout this year, but he really hasn't. He's a good backup, don't get me wrong, but um, he doesn't. He's, well, he's not worth screaming and shouting about, certainly. So a new goalkeeper would be a very nice position to try and pick someone up in. I do think in terms of a more defensive-minded midfielder, uh, we could definitely do with another uh, we've signed Kevin McGrath obviously this year who for some reason is in massive decline we've been training him to play centre back so as a result really the only more defensive minded centre mids we have if you could even call them that are Romario Vieira and probably if we're being honest with ourselves probably Jeff Hughes the rest of our players obviously we've discovered an abundance of young attacking talent in the central midfield but defensively a little lacklustre. Higher up the pitch, I do feel like strikers we could improve upon. I feel like Paul O'Connor definitely has a spot in the first team next year, you know, to fight for alongside Stuart and McDade. Someone like Oddie. Oddie's good. Is he great? I don't think so. Uh, he's been good for what we've got out of him. He still has room to improve. He's the kind of player who might find himself slipping into the under-20s. You know, players like Oddie, I want to give regular first team football to. Obviously, all of these players I want to give regular first-team football to because the main aim with this club is to become sustainable and it is to develop young talent, and it young talent needs game time. Uh, I do feel like, in terms of our approach to balancing our squad's playing time, that is something that I've definitely got to look at for next year. The tactic has obviously worked wonders. Um, playing five at the back for the first time in this year in FM, I feel like we've created so much with this system, which is great to say. The wingbacks have been really instrumental in it. And you'd have to say, I feel like it really has got the most out of Kebby and Tilney. When you actually kind of compare them to some of the other positions that we've strengthened throughout the season, 
our fullback position is just a position where, well, uh, th- these two aren't the best players, and for the most part, they've been the players playing there, of course. Later on in the year, we did sign uh, McDermott to play right wing back. But um, with this system, we've got so much out of our wing backs. I'm hoping that's going to be a recurring trend. You can see here between them, 32 assists. Now, granted, that is over 75 games, but if you ask me, that's still a pretty good return for players in the wider kind of fullback areas of the pitch. Hopefully, we will continue to see that trend, obviously, next year with us going up a division. In terms of the long-term goals here at the club, though, as I said, I want to have half the team homegrown in the next seven years. Is that possible? I don't know. We have plenty of money at our disposal. It's difficult to know right now exactly what I want to go for. I do feel like I want to continue kind of down the route we've gone down, at least for the next few years. Obviously, with us only being able to sign players under the age of well, 18 or younger from the UK, with the exception of Northern Ireland, where we can sign them up to the age of 21. We kind of have a window of opportunity here to sign quote-unquote real players. And as fun as it is to, like, you know, get good regens in, players like Mandanta, there is something quite nice about having younger, real footballing talents who um, you might not have heard of before, you might not have necessarily seen when you've managed the massive clubs in the Football Manager and kind of make them into little cult heroes within your own FM saves. I'd love to sign a few more trainee players, players that we've not really heard of before. Um, players like Keenan Bennett, for example, who we signed, I think, at Lewis a couple of years ago, who obviously is now, I think, playing in the Bundesliga. I think back to FM13 with FC United of Manchester, where we signed Angus Gunn, who was released from Manchester City. I think as a team in the North Conference North, and he came with us all the way up, and obviously you now look at him playing in the Premier League. It's sometimes funny seeing players like that in your FM saves who, you know, in FM, you know, when they're really young, aren't tipped for a lot, but they really, you know, develop into fine players. I'm sure you guys who have been around the channel a while can probably think of a few more examples like that, those kind of players. Uh, I think of players like Kelechi Ihinacho, of course, at Manchester City. Before he had his breakthrough years, we signed him for Lewis FC, I think, in FM 15, so kind of four years ago now. It's fun, and it adds a nice dynamic to the save to see some young, kind of real player talents become these cult heroes. So that's something I definitely like to try and do whilst we can. So with that in mind, I might go a little bit crazy signing players again this year, which I'd like to not go too crazy with. I want it to be more calculated, I think, than last year. I think when you look at the transfer signings that we made, yes, we signed a ridiculous amount of players. Far too many, in hindsight. But I've managed to secure some very good Northern Irish talent. And also, I feel like we now have a pretty good feel for exactly how good our under-20s are, for exactly you know what the standards are for Northern Irish football. Kind of came in a little bit blind this year, not knowing exactly what was expected of our team, of our squad. And I feel like we leave now with a pretty good understanding of what's going to be required of us next year. And obviously, I am familiar with the Europa League. I know what the standards are for Europe in terms of player quality. And so I don't feel as kind of out of my depth and out of my comfort zone going up into the the Premiership this coming year and also obviously hopefully challenging in Europe for what could be a, a really good kind of tie. You can see here European places playoffs are actually still going on. I don't know how this works. I guess it's the top teams in the league outside of the team who are top going to a playoff. I don't know. I don't know how Ballymena have got it. Answers on a postcard if you know how this playoff works and how the teams are selected. But um, yeah, I mean, when you look at this game team, Glenavon are the team to kind of look out for, I think, next year. It was a very tight season, to be fair. You can see they've got Shane, I think it's Lavery, uh, Lavery or Lavery. We'll go with Lavery, it sounds better, uh, from Everton. He's a very good striker. I'm kind of familiar with him. Um, he scored nine goals in 13 for them, hopefully. I mean, he's the kind of player who I'd like to sign in the summer if possible, but I feel like Everton are probably going to want too much for us. But, um, you know, we want to really be challenging the likes of these guys. You can see, looking at the league table, it was crazily close in the end between the, the teams at the top. If you look, four points separating the top three. We want to be right up there challenging. I want to be right up there, hopefully playing for Champions League football next year. That's going to be the longer term goal, I guess, for next season. And obviously, I'd like to compete on all fronts just like we did this year. Anyway, I've rambled on and this has almost become like an extra episode in itself. Just to wrap things up, we'll just have a look at, I think we'll look at our board confidence just real quick. You can see here a general overview of things. The board are very happy with everything, of course. The club's finances are in great stead. Dressing room, players love me. Tactically, the board seem to really like the kind of football we're playing. This kind of nice passing play, but with this kind of slightly unconventional possession orientated system. 
I like it. It works quite nicely, and I'd like to kind of try and continue playing this. Of course, with us going into Europe and also, you know, probably going to have some bigger games on the horizon, more competitive league games, I might want to form a plan B. If I was to guess what our plan B might be, it'd probably be some kind of 4-2-3-1, to be honest, with a more conventional shape. We've signed a lot of very exciting players who can play in the wider areas of the pitch. Obviously, a lot of those have actually ended up in the under-20s uh, well, under this year because I just can't quite fit them in. But over the next you know year or so, I'd like to you know try and bed maybe a few more of these players into the first team and make them, well, regulars. But anyway, guys, that's going to be all from me today. Rambly end to this video. If you have watched until the end, leave a comment about cucumbers. Just go down, scroll to the bottom, leave a cucumber comment. It lets me know that you're not just skipping to the end. And also, if you're one of those people who likes to lurk away and not always leave a comment, it does let me know that you exist too. Anyway, that is going to be all from me today. Thank you for your support so far on this series. It is massively, massively appreciated. I'm looking forward to next year. Obviously, as I said, next episode is probably going to be our Europa League campaign. I am definitely going to do, I think, a uh, well, uh, the Project Extra episode at some point early next season. Really does depend on if I'm able to execute on the plan that I've got in my head in terms of really upgrading the under-20s, making more use of the reserves. Obviously, if we can get into reserve cup competitions, which we weren't in this year, that would be useful too. I don't know exactly how that's set up in Northern Ireland, but well, time will tell. Anyway, guys, that is going to be all from me today. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've been enjoying the project thus far. And uh, well, I will see you guys on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.